Bro, listen. Never in my life associated the word boring with baseball. We know, we know what's up. Me? Yeah. Famous? Yeah. And I'm like giddy over there smiling like, holy, I mean, we're about to win this shit. Did anyone give you crap? Give me a good like host story. You know, I'm like, I'm not picking it up. No, we both love the game. We, we talk about it every day. Can't get off baseball. Having some popcorn, you're fooling around your phone. I'd have to weigh a mine for three hours. Like, but hang on, because it's about to be a wild ride. All right, there's no human being on the planet right now that I'd rather talk to you than Chandler Simpson. That's a fact. Hi, Chandler. How are you? How are you? How are you doing? We're going on. How are you doing? I'm good. Good. Uh, Thank you for joining us. Um, And uh, you're resting your legs today, correct? Correct? Yes, sir. I am resting resting my legs today. (laughs) Listen, I've never never stolen three bases in a game. Um, I've certainly not have haven't stolen 102 bases in a season. So I don't know how your legs feel right now. How do you, how do you feel? How's your legs feel right now? I feel good. I mean, I feel like I could play, play like a whole another hundred games. Or you so. do? Yeah, I do. I feel good. I feel good. Thankfully. Really? All right. Okay. All right. Well, as I, as I referenced, um, you are, you are, I don't want to, I'm going to focus on the stolen bases. Because when you steal 102, done something over 100 for the first time, nobody's done it in the minor leagues in right. 10 years, and you know who that was because you've been seeing the stories. I bet right? uh, Billy Hamilton. Billy Hamilton. It's Billy a... Hamilton. Man, he is uh-huh. fast. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Great but dude. but you got to get on base to steal bases. So and so and that's the other. So I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna talk about the stolen bases in a second. Okay. But but you know, so for you. You know, you you're obviously you're you're hitting over 350. Um, you're getting on base a ton, and you you even have a home run. Which where was that home mm-hmm. run? Where was the home run? Uh, it was down the uh, third baseline, like a ground ball down the third baseline. Was about to kick off the bullpen, and then the left fielder uh, misjudged it and was able to get it inside of Parker. Oh, it was inside the park home run. It wasn't oh. <laughs> inside of inside of park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna ask if you did a bat flip, but no, I guess not. Oh man. So what, what's the last outside the park home run you hit? Uh, that's the first inside the park I have hit. So. No, have you ever? Have, but you, I mean, I'm talking about outside of minor leagues. Georgia oh Tech. yeah, uh, I hit one at Georgia. I hit a grand slam at Georgia Tech. You did, uh, yeah. My last year, yes, sir. Okay, all right. Which, which, which felt better, stealing a base or hitting a home run? Be honest. Be honest. <laughs> Be honest. The fact that it was a grand slam, it felt good. It felt great. It felt great. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I I hope that, that obviously, like, I hope that's what you would say because you steal bases all the time. Um, all right, so you went to Georgia Tech. I mean, I I wanted. There's a lot I wanted to talk to you about, and again, I appreciate you joining. Um, uh, so you you're from the Atlanta area, correct? Right? Yes, sir. Correct. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, first, first off, who who did you? I just talked to. Uh, we just had on Cedric Mullins. Who, really? Yeah, he grew up a Braves fan. And it's like he's uh-huh. like the sweet spot, Andrew Jones. And so, who was yeah. your guy? Who was your guy? I would assume you're you were a Braves guy, right? Yeah, I was. Uh, okay. okay, who was your guy? Uh, back then, I say like I really liked Michael Bourne, uh, Ender NCRT because they played. They I could model my game after them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I say I say Michael Bourne, Ender NCRT, say like one of those guys. Or, all right, again, Maybe Andrew two, Jones, yeah. but but they, Andrew Jones was before your time. I mean, like you were yeah, you weren't yeah, even yeah, born yet. Sense. I mean, it's like yeah, so. I mean, I'm not. I would not have guessed those two that you mentioned, but it's you want to pattern your game. So when you were a little yeah. kid and you're growing mm-hmm. up in Atlanta, were you did you like challenging people to races? Uh, it wasn't even necessarily me. It was people challenging me to races. Ooh. Honestly. So yeah, they just I guess like one time uh we had like a friendly race against somebody, not necessarily anybody challenging anybody, and then after that I won and everybody wanted a piece. So <laughs> so yeah. did, did anyone did anyone get that piece? Did anyone win? Uh no, I can't say anybody. Uh, got oh, of that. course not. Which which by the way, now that I'm thinking of it, so you must have gone to Braves games, right? Yes, most definitely. 
did you ever this is a logical question channel uh, you, I don't, you gonna guess where i'm going with this yeah 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 did you ever race the freeze did you ever I, try to race the freeze i did not i did not you didn't why oh come on that would have been so good that would have been so yeah, good yeah it would have i didn't have the opportunity to do that okay would have been cool though yeah would've, i would have picked you um so <laughs> uh so so to 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 loop this back yeah. nobody has beaten you in a race ever be honest be no honest. i can't re- i can't recall no can't recall me too ever I've never raced anyone though. Fair. So, uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, but so never, wow. That's incredible. Was, has there ever been, so obviously I was focusing on when you were your kid, but since you've made it to the pros, has people, have people tried to do the same thing? Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> Not since I've been in the pros, but when I was in playing summer ball, uh, one of my best friends, Victor Scott, we will always race when we play summer ball together. So we will always have a battle back and forth. Who was who was that with? What who, what team was that with? Uh, that's with the Fond du Lac Dock Spiders. All right, I want to give I want to I want to give them credit. Um, so you end up at Georgia Tech. You went to before that. You went to UAB. UAB. Yes, UAB. Sir. Okay, you go to Georgia Tech. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and you know this is when sort of you get on everybody's radar. Uh, mm-hmm. And we had we were met talking about this. It is amazing, Chandler, that two of the I, I could make this argument the t- the top two players in minor league baseball this year mm-hmm. were on the same Georgia Tech team, or I mean at Georgia Tech, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. am, am I wrong? Yeah, no, you're not wrong. Christian Campbell of the, mm-hmm. of the Red Sox organization, mm-hmm. who is you know I I don't know if you yeah. keep in touch with him or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, he's going, he's having a crazy year. Crazy year, right? Crazy year, yeah. But but you were playing sec- you were playing what second or short at Georgia? Tech? Uh, I played both. Like first half, play short, and then second half, play second. Okay, so it's Christian true. Campbell, who was ultimately drafted in the fourth round by the mm-hmm. by the Red Sox, he and you said you know you don't have to say this but the <laughs> scouting guy for the red sox told me that you know that he one of the reasons he redshirted was because you were there which happens it's fine it's all good and so but to think about oh, holy mackerel if i'm georgia tech i'm screaming this from the mountaintops like <laughs> right yeah I mean, well, definitely yeah so when when you saw I mean, you guys Again, do you follow each other like, with Christian Campbell? Yeah, we follow, follow we follow each other on, on Instagram, and then whenever we have like some accomplishments, then I'll you know what I'm saying text him congrats and tell him to keep going, and he'll do the same for me. So you know what I love about it though, like your stories. Obviously, you're different. He did not steal 102 bases, but mm-hmm. at the same time, the evolution of you guys, like that's what's cool, right? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. you you ultimately were drafted by Tampa in the second round. You you uh, immediately go to the outfield. They immediately switch you to the outfield, yes, right? Sir. Yes, right. Sir. And so with Christian, like they're moving him all. He played what second second at, in yeah. in uh, at Georgia Tech. He but he, second, a little bit of outfield, a little bit. Over. Yeah. So now he's he's still moving all over the place. But mm-hmm. he was a guy who who wasn't hitting the ball in the air that much. I think. Yeah. Um And and I mean, what I'm saying is that I don't know if you've talked to him about this mm-hmm. about sort of like, hey, wow. Wow, professional baseball is different when you got into it. If if you right. got, I mean, because it, it is your second round pick in Georgia Tech, and you're probably thinking, "Let's go, major leagues," a couple of weeks yeah. away, right? Yeah. But it, it, but but it, but yeah. it's a, it's different, huh? Yeah, it's 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 not that. It's you have to be patient. It's a grind. It's it's a long time. I mean, it's I mean necessarily it's not a long time because obviously some people like I mean juggernauts like Paul Skeens or. Holiday can make it in a year, but I mean, there's there's a patience factor in it, depending on the org you're in, uh, depending on the big leagues, depending on the farm system, the players, whatever. But yeah, I mean, it's a grind. You got to grind your way through all the levels, so you got to perform. So, what was the biggest thing when you first started playing pro ball that you're like, I could get better at this? Uh, I say, I mean, I say the outfield. Like, I mean, I just got put out there. Um. So I, I knew it was a lot of work to be done, like angles and routes and reading the ball and prep step and first step and all that stuff. So they broke down the numbers to me and told me that I had to get better at that. So I knew that was something I had to focus on. 
And and when you so this go to the stealing the bases because uh, that's your I don't know if you know this you're really good at it at corrections. <laughs> um, but, you. Yeah, you're welcome. I mean, I'm sure that nobody's ever said that to you. Um, <laughs> but uh, but you stole bases at Georgia Tech. I would imagine that you have stolen bases at Georgia Tech. You probably stole bases in Little League. You've stolen bases your whole life, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Right. Do you remember your first mm -hmm. stolen base ever? I do not. No, I, I, that I was a not. test. I didn't expect you would. But yes, uh, but when you get to the when you get to pro ball, is it mm -hmm. you, know, you know obviously you're talking about adjustments. How about stealing bases? Like did did a coach lock you up and say, all right, we know that you can steal bases. I'm going to teach you how to really really steal bases. Or was it just they just left you alone and you just went? No, I mean <clears throat> first, I mean when I got there and I was in the complex, played a couple games in the complex. After I got drafted, you know, I was still in bags and kind of showed, I feel like I showed the organization that I could do that uh, to a high ability. So when I got to low A, it was just about like figuring out, just being, just figuring out different things of how I can be successful and have a high successful rate. So uh, the coordinators, uh, the coach, uh, the coach, uh, first base coach there when I was in low A, that's all we was doing was grinding, trying to figure out different ways uh, I can to be successful because everybody knows I'm going. The pitcher, the catcher, the pitcher <laughs> coach, everybody knows I'm going. So finding out ways that even though they know I'm going, I can still be able to go whenever I want and be safe. So just find out different cues, going to different counts, knowing who's at the plate, uh, just knowing the time to the plate. We got the, uh, the pitch clock now, so what time – what second on the clock is he pitch at? Is he 1,000, 1,002? He got a head nod, all those things. So, yeah, just grinding all that, looking at video, doing my homework. So yeah. so, so you're into it, man. So tell me the thing. You just you just rattle off a bunch of stuff. Tell me the thing. If you're going to say, yeah, you're fast and you steal bases, but you don't understand if you do this, you'll become that much better. Like you mentioned, maybe it's pitch clock, maybe it's – Maybe whatever it is, like maybe it's a lead, maybe it's body positioning. I don't know what it is. What is the thing to you that people don't value enough when it comes to stealing bases? I honestly say it would be none of that. I honestly say it's the relentless part of it. Like, cause I feel like a lot of people are um, just really like hesitant when it comes to it. And, and they're always thinking about the pick or going back and they're never thinking about the 90 feet in front of them. So I feel like the relentlessness part of it and the aggression part of it is like I'm gonna go right when he like whatever when he picks let up right here at this pitch is like I feel like that mindset is what you have to have the most because I mean there's some people that's not as fast as others but can steal bases better than people that's fast because I feel like they have that relentlessness in stealing bases and that aggression. That's so when you're on when you get on you're like good luck man. It's just, I'm, I'm, it's me versus you. Like, it's gone. I mean, I mean, yeah. how many, you probably can count how many times that, that you haven't gone. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Every, yeah. Uh, every, uh, unless it's a uh, first pitch or, you know, whatever it is, but when you get mm -hmm. on, uh, how many pitch out have they, have they even had any pitch outs? So they, what do they do? Like, well, how do you stop? Yeah. They you... pitch out like just this past or yesterday, like when I was trying to get a hundred, I was at 99. Um, I mean, everybody knew I was trying to get other team. No, I was trying to get it. So I feel like they, I mean, they were trying to stop it, I guess, because they don't want history made against them. But um, like when I got over there, I got on, when I let off, got a hit, got over there, pick off twice, boom, boom. So you use ball, you, only, you know, you only get three. So he picked off twice, threw fastball, pitch out, like like he was intentionally walking somebody, like pitch out. So everybody, I hear the oohs and ahs, like, yeah, they don't want you to get it. Is that the third? The, the other team that dug out, they chirping. They're like, you're not going to get it. Like, okay. So they pitch out, boom, first pitch. And I'm like, because I had a, like a little epiphany the night before. I was like, I'm not going to go on the first pitch. This when I get the 100, I'm going to go on the second pitch. So I can, I don't know, element of surprise or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But second time, and I told that to my, the person that hit behind me. I'm like, I'm not going to go on the first pitch. I'm going to go on the second one. So boom, first pitch, they pitched out. Second pitch, boom, I'm off and running. So I mean, so you've already had the two pickoffs. You've already had a pitch out. You're like mm -hmm. basically they might have well just step off the field and say, "Here you go, here's second base." Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I love the fact that they were chirping from the dugout. Yeah, yeah. You know, I can get it. We got him. We got him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so, ooh, uh, so you know as you're talking i'm like i'm like oh my goodness it's ricky henderson it's ricky henderson <laughs> i mean i i don't I, you didn't you didn't raise you didn't get the second raise the bag above your head did you i did it no i did it but after the game they gave me the bag and did a little announcement and i rose the bag oh they did <laughs> the oh nice yeah, that's awesome uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that pretty cool so did you you along the lines of ricky henderson do you watch to like have you do you, I mean, I would imagine like home run hitters want to watch home run hitters, but do you watch? I don't know who yeah, you watch and who who do you watch? I mean, I watch uh, Ricky Henderson. I saw like the documentary he had. I can't remember the name of it, but saw that documentary when he's in Oakland and all that. I uh, watch D Gordon, Billy Hamilton, Lou Brock, Vince Coleman, um, Billy Hamilton. Um, that's a guy that stole Draw Dyson. Mm -hmm. And the dude that got like three World Series back to back to back, I forget his name. Vince Coleman. Not no. Vince Coleman. It's like recent. Like he went royal. You haven't even mentioned Brady's. Acuna, have you? Did you mention Acuna? No, I didn't. Acuna too. Acuna's yeah. yeah he's he doing. I mean, come on. He's like he's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That's, that's the guy. Ellie, cool. Ellie, yeah. Oh well, so. That's the thing is that I don't know if you ever go on baseball savant or anything like that. You know, obviously, mm -hmm. I don't know. Do they major leagues? We can see who's the fastest guy in baseball. I think Bobby Witt actually junior is right now. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I don't know. Have you compared your times to the fastest guy in the major leagues? I, I haven't, but when I was in high earlier this year, I had a play. There was a play where I was at first and I had to run home and they brought me in the office the next day was reading off numbers to me and said that it was the fastest time um, in the minors and major leaguers. And they kind of like said like, wow, you're the first fast player in baseball. And I was like, I mean, okay. Like, <laughs> That's it. You're but, faster than Ellie. You're faster than Witt. You're faster <laughs> than Corbin Carroll. <laughs> but, yeah that's what they say so have you have you ever is, have you ever been time i know that you know you're being timed to first and I, I always love asking about 40 times you ever been timed in the 40 i have not been timed in the 40 now yeah because you, you didn't play football no i did not yeah no. don't worry about it you, you found the right <laughs> sport but it, it it's and speaking of you mentioned d gordon it's funny because christian mm -hmm. campbell that's his guy Mm -hmm. that's like so anyway that's here yeah. here there but christian was he was just on our podcast too so i just that was top okay, of mind. Cool. Yeah, yeah 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 but we only have georgia tech guys tomorrow is uh jason veritech no i'm just kidding okay i know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> like, did you face skeins did you face skeins no nah, i didn't face skeins at all no i didn't okay i'm just checking it's it's, yeah. it's one of the things we have to check off did you face skeins um <laughs> Uh, but you know, so now you're sort of you know, like you said, we're focused on stolen bases, but really, I mean, you're just an all around good player. You don't, you're Thank you. the, the hitting, the the fielding, and all of that. I mean, to where you you still get a little bit to go here, but yeah. still, you're not that far off. And I ask this of guys like you all the time, like, can you feel it? And like, it's not bad to to say, hey, you know, I'm, I can feel that I'm close. Did did you could you get a chance to play in any major league spring training games? Uh, I got to I got to play in one last year, and I got to play in one this past year. So yeah. Okay, so you'll get to play in more, but yeah. You know, so, but you're close. I mean, can you feel sort of? And you're getting a lot of attention now, and and rightfully so. But could you can you feel that that everything that sort of is coming together, and and that it's right around the corner? Yeah, most of that, I can definitely feel that everything's coming together. Um, I try to not really pay attention too much on the promotion stuff just because it can go every which way and stuff like that but i mean i can i mean I, everybody's just telling me that it's close it's close so and i can and it's been a don't, lifelong dude, dream don't, so. don't worry about it it's, it's okay it's okay <laughs> like that's that's you've earned that right like you've earned that right right to to be yeah. that close i mean you were at the you were at the futures game right to be uh -huh. in a uh like the to be at globe life field to be yeah. in, a, in a major league clubhouse to mm -hmm. like this is all of this is it's yeah. close i mean yes sir yeah and so yes, sir. so when when so now you have this um you have this mark you've had this season what do you do where do you go do you go back to atlanta do you say hey listen you know i, I don't know how you trained before if you go back to georgia tech i don't know like what do you do like what's the next step because 
because I'm going to tell you right now, Chandler, this is the last off season where you're not going to be in the major leagues. So, I mean, you couldn't help like that. I'm telling you. And, and by the way, if you're in major league spring training, the per diem's a lot better. So, uh, <laughs> I've heard, I've heard. Oh yeah, yeah. No more I've like, heard. what do you get for per diem? Double A. What is that? Uh, I don't even know. I just know it's higher than high. But yeah, yeah. but I, so you don't. It's like we had Marcelo Meyer on. He said he stuffed all of it into an envelope, if to save for the <laughs> end of the year. But yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Some guys immediately go at one o'clock in the morning to Waffle House. Um, but anyway, <laughs> but I'm, what I'm saying is that this is this you're close and like so the off season. What are you doing? What's what's how are you going to be? I'm and I'm getting you pumped up. I'm you know this is you're ready to go here, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that you're seeing a lot of articles about you, but consider this okay. the ultimate motivation that I'm telling you, like it's right around the corner and these few months coming up, that's going to be the launching pad to mm-hmm. spring training and then the major league. So what are you doing? What What's that launching pad looking like? Uh, finish the season out sh- healthy and strong. Um, and uh, just maybe take like a little time off, maybe like a couple weeks. Um, and then get to moving around, just start training again, and just making sure I'm just taking day by day, continue to maintain strength or build some strength, maintain speed, and then uh, make sure everything's healthy and strong come spring training and make sure I'm ready to go, and then just make sure I'm heading there strong and ready to ready to play. Do you uh, – so do you, tra- do you go back to Atlanta? Yes, sir. Okay. You work out with anybody there that we would know or uh, – Yeah, I work – Got with uh, Lawrence Butler, Victor Scott, uh, Marquise Grissom Jr. Uh, yeah, so Mark so there Church. You go. They'll they'll tell you all about the per diem. I don't need to tell you about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, well, I, just a couple more questions, and these are sort of random. Um, mm-hmm. Number one, uh, I I ask this almost of everybody, and there's no wrong answers. For you, why isn't baseball boring? Why isn't baseball boring? Yeah, no wrong answers. Assuming you think it's, it's not boring. Yeah, no, it's not boring. I feel like baseball isn't boring to me just because, like, one, I play it, so I know, like, other stuff to look for than just three outs, next team goes on the field, three outs, next team goes on the field. So, like, just the game within the game, especially, like, still in bases, like, I'm paying attention to somebody at first, and if you get – you know what I'm saying? Or he get the bag or it's a close game and, you know what I'm saying, this could have happened to make this situation happen and stuff like that. So just paying probably the little things, little things in the in the game probably make it interesting. There's a lot more little things in football, basketball, or baseball. Yeah, hockey, most definitely. Right? Most definitely. Most definitely. I mean, we had on Marvin Harrison Jr. And he said uh, he said that hitting a home run is harder than catching a touchdown pass. Yeah. I'm saying that most stealing definitely. a base is harder than catching a touchdown pass. What do you say? Yeah, I say so for sure. Yeah, I say so, especially when they're pitching out and, and yeah, pitching. Sure and they know you go. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That was much more difficult than the, any touchdown pass that was caught this weekend. Uh, um, all right, last <laughs> last couple of things. So these are just random. Um, are you a big candy corn guy? Hello, this is for Halloween. I am not a big candy corn guy. All right. Big candy corn guy. Nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with that. And then, in the spirit of uh, school being back in session, math, yeah. good or yay or nay? Yay. You like yeah. math? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Math's smooth, no reading. So, all right. I, I go because I always like there's some one subject that people say, why are we taking this? And I always thought it was math. But now, like baseball players, though, they don't think that way because they're trying to figure out stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, we got a whole bunch of stats and numbers and stuff. So, I mean, well, you know what's not hard to it. figure out? Stolen bases. That's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I really appreciate it. It's it's a blast. I look forward to seeing you in person. Yes, sir. Appreciate you.